guys, and welcome to RC Cincy. Woo, let's get past that. Uh, and I like to share, do a reveal on the um, 336 Earth, the Earth Digger 114 scale Earth Digger 360L. So I ordered something from RC Four Wheel Drive for it, obviously, and uh, I got some extras. Uh, these are the 110 scale truck stickers. Look at that, really, really nice. Uh, good quality stickers. There's some neat little stickers there. All kinds of different ones. I got one more. Uh, boom. So I guess, I don't know if you just have to spend a certain much or if they just throw them in there with your orders. Um, I guess it's like the 20th anniversary or whatever. So maybe they're doing that because of that. But I thought that was a really nice touch. So I have some extra stickers for my 110 scale trucks. And um, basically, I got a really, really nice sticker uh, uh, set up. From excavator so let me go ahead and reveal that to you so this is the back of course it's the volvo this was what this was designed for and uh, to mimic and look just like the volvo right so these are really high quality stickers you do have to cut them out right not the sticker sheet uh, peel one clear plastic which allow it to stick onto the surface then you press it really really tight and then peel the top layer off and they're just beautifully stuck on there very high quality you may want to clear coat these just to protect in case you rub or hit something i like how this one's kind of indented so if you rub the sides shouldn't rub the sticker uh the only ones i use from the factory was obviously this one for the remote and then the um the pinch points and warning uh stickers so i did those exactly how it is on the real machine on both the corners um i just thought it looked more scale this way right so there's that, that looks really, really good. Here, let me get out of the light. Here is the side, I think that looks beautiful. That sticker is perfectly cut out to fit that, you see that? That looks stunning. My wife put these on, by the way, she does a great job. There is the Volvo sticker. And then uh, jumping to this other side before I do the boom reveal, beautiful uh, EC4800 or 480. Um, and then another Volvo sticker there. And then the big reveal on the boom. I think it looks absolutely stunning. I love that big Volvo one there. Obviously I did the little warning sticker there, just like it's supposed to be. Volvo on this side. I think these stickers look really, really good with the warning sign up there. So basically I try to make it as look as scale as possible. Um, I, I thought about using this one like on the door, but if you look at the color, like this sticker goes like this on the door or whatever, but I'm looking at the color, this one's more, that one's more black and this one more has like a grayish like tint to it. Sorry, I'm doing a crappy job showing that. Hold on a second. Like you see that, like this one's more of a grayish tint. So yeah, it's, that's not gonna work for me. Uh, it would have been off and I don't want that. I love the way this looks. Um, it looks scale to me. Uh, one thing I am going to do uh, is move this exhaust. Uh, so it's meant to be turned to the back. Where they placed the tank at got it kind of this way. Uh, it's going to take some fiddling, but I'm trying to figure out a way to get this to point towards the back and to clear the hood. I don't want to cut the hood. If, if it doesn't allow me to do that, I won't. But it'd be really nice if they would have done it to where this uh, obviously you can move the placement of the tank maybe forward, cut those notches where it has for the tank and just move them up and then tack a couple of things. I mean, there's ways to do it, but honestly, um, I just didn't want to get too crazy with it, but I would love to, uh, have this turned facing back or at least facing out this way, I think would look better. If it faces out that way, not kind of blowing back in. Um, so that's one pet piece. Uh, a viewer actually pointed out, so I joined a little local uh, 114 scale kind of club where we like share different machinery, tips, uh, where to buy stuff, um, you know, meetings, meet and greets, uh, places where you can actually get together and have really cool construction sites. I'm really into that. This is an international club. Uh, so I'm hoping I could put my ear to the ground and find out, you know, some local places that are uh, throwing an event. I would love to go to an event, right? So... I actually put a picture on this and everyone was loving it. And one guy that's, I guess, was really knowledgeable with this. He said that uh, these are great machines, really powerful, really strong machines. Um, and he said the only thing he saw was this was pointed the wrong way, uh, which can be easily fiddled away. He said it's kind of tough clearing it, but you can get it in a way to where it still points to the back and it clears. It just takes some uh, work, um, you know, and uh, yeah. 
So, um, what else? Let me get my mirrors here straightened up. I still haven't put super glue on the mirrors. Now, you can see dirt, a potting soil here, and you can see the really tough stuff there. Uh, I did a dig video, and I, I thought I had enough battery. The phone died midway of the digging video, so it pretty much corrupted and ruined the whole basically ruined the whole video i'm so bummed out because i really wanted the first dig video like right away for this so i immediately drove onto the potting the 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 top soil that i dumped a pile of where i'm gonna do my construction site it just it was like it wasn't even going into anything it just went right through smooth consistent speed had zero obviously it would have zero issues or you would expect to at least with this caliber of a machine so i'm like man this needs a uh tough uh Tough spot. So I found a spot by the garden, which I guess I could go out there and show you guys. I may have to. Uh, maybe I'll do that towards the end of the video if you're curious. Uh, so it was covered with vines. I ripped the vines out and then kind of pushed the bucket on the like the grass part and like went like this and got it off. I didn't use my hands for anything uh, besides the control sticks. And I literally powered, ripped all the vines off the top, dug through the dirt, dug so deep I hit clay, dug through the clay, uh, it wasn't digging extremely fast. It's not meant to. It was digging really scale. It would slow down in some places where it was really tough, but still, I would still have other motions available, like either turning like the bucket like this or curling more or lifting it up a little bit or moving the stick in a little bit. There was always an option. I felt like I felt like I wasn't always completely stuck and I pulled through, dug a really deep hole. Uh, it, it's pretty deep. Uh, and I didn't where I kept like folks would like trim the edges showing like it digs like it has a good time Yeah, if you just quit trimming the edge with half the bucket You're always gonna be able to get a good scoop And it'll keep the machine from getting overpowered It is a good digging technique. My technique isn't that great But I was able to literally just power my way through and just dig straight down is what I basically did Only like a bucket with only like a bucket like probably like that wide like that and then like straight deep because I just want to see its capabilities it is a monster. Mind you, this is set up around 2 MPA right out of the box, which is 290 pounds of BSI or 20 bar. Uh, it's capable of 3.5, I think, max. I think it said 2.5 or 3.5. I'm sure the system can hold 3.5. I won't recommend running it at that. Uh, the pump will probably spool up pretty high because it is a low RPM torquey pump. So I think 2.5 what it should be i think mine's at two it was set up for two i think it easily can handle two and a half uh, that's probably what i'm going to adjust it eventually to i want to leave it factory out of the box settings to give you that experience and then maybe we can do some tuning it is tricky because not only you have to tune this one but you have to tune the other one they kind of coincide to exist there's a four-way t in there uh and this just allows how much flow goes back to return tank and how much pressure stays in the system is what this does this is another relief point so there's really it's not easy tuning and adjusting the pressure on these things. Start cranking on it all crazy. Uh, you may get yourself in a hairy situation. You'll be, the motor will be working against itself. Your motor will get really, really hot all of a sudden. Your ESC will get really hot. So it's very easy to damage or spring a leak. Uh, I, I like their hardware. Uh, this is four mil line. I actually have these fittings I may have mentioned before. So that's cool. If one of these go bad, I have these fittings. Um, they're very powerful. <laughs> They're very strong. Uh, the hydraulic system is flawless. Um, so I was speaking to that guy about all kinds of stuff about it. And um, yeah, so I will be getting back out there hopefully soon, depending on weather. It's supposed to get cold and rainy again. It's just, it's not the best weather for it. Honestly, I, sh I really shouldn't have. I kind of regret getting in that dirt it's a pain in the butt to clean luckily the bucket is the only thing i really have to clean uh the tracks were kind of on the grass so they didn't get any of that nasty dirt on that this potting soil dirt i can just take a um we call it look i mean it'll come right off i'm not saying that this isn't going to be in dirt but you want to take care of these machines when you're done please please use like a toothbrush or a little air blower thing do not use water guys will sit there and try to spray these with water that is the silliest thing. Uh, not anything bad against Sparks, uh, our, uh, Spark Studios. Uh, I forget his gentleman's name. He's been doing really great with the channel. He has like 3.5 million views. He does great with his channel, but he actually watched his. Um, it's the it's the other generation, the first one, the the 4200X. So it doesn't have as much scale detail, but it's still a great machine. Digs basically the same thing as this, but just uh, this is just more like scale, right? It's a great machine, uh, and I guess he like washed it, and there was a little bit of water in there, and it burned his ESC, and then the motor didn't act right, and he had to replace the motor and ESC. 
Um, so for him, I'm sure that cost wasn't as bad. Uh, still knows what he's doing. He did a great job installation and showing how you do that. But I guess if you were to properly, properly, completely, perfectly dried it, it may have been okay. But just it takes just a little bit of water to ruin something. So don't use water. Use cans of dust off just in the tight areas. And then uh, get one of those like little air blower things people use to clean PCs. Uh, I'm going to get one and just kind of blow this stuff off. Get in there with brushes, not wire brushes because it'll kind of... Well, I don't know. This is powder coat. I don't know how... I mean, you can scrape it off still, but it should be a little tougher. Uh, I thought about cleaning it really good gently and then clear coating a lot of this stuff. You can do that. A lot of folks do that for protection purposes. Um, but yeah, so that's something to think about. So I just want to kind of address all those things. Uh, it is a beast of a machine, literally. So keep that in mind. Um, and uh, update on this. The stuff still is still should be projected to come uh, between the 6th and the 26th at the latest. So we're still going to work on that. I pulled the uh, turn motor out uh, because I noticed there was a lot of hydraulic oil around it and underneath it. I wanted to clean in there make sure everything in that area was completely clean. Hydraulic oil will loosen stuff will break stuff apart, take off stickiness or any adhesive or anything that's down there. Uh, it, it's it's hairy stuff. So keep that in mind. Um, but I, I think I'm going to end up changing all these hydraulic lines. I pulled them out from underneath there. I was I was going to pull a pin and remove the arm. I was like, oh, I'll wait to do that. I, I, I'm really going to go through everything and make sure everything is just solid and 100% buttoned up on this machine. Um, not that there's anything wrong with the turn motor. I have other bits and bobs. I don't know if I ever showed you guys. So remember how the uh, ESCs uh, had like these hard soldered connectors like this, and you could only put them a certain way. Well, I bought uh, uh, XT30 connectors. So now with these great, really nice silicone wires, I can put them any way, any angle, anywhere I want. And I think that's going to be the biggest factor for space. A lot of folks, they use the factory electronics. They think they can only plug in one way and sit that way. And they stick out so far and there's just no room. Uh, with this right here, will allow you to basically stack them, put them to one side, put them to the other. They're long enough to move them where you need to move them to. So that's why I bought four of these uh, connections for all four ASCs. So I can move them wherever I need to move them. Uh, what else? Yeah, well, I can't remember what else. But yeah, so I'm still, you know, like figuring stuff out, doing research. Uh, I kind of looked at this hydraulic system for inspiration. I got some ideas. I pretty much have everything. Uh, I actually ordered even this. It's going to have more features than this. When it comes to the hydraulic system, like it's going to have, well, not initially. It's going to have a full system perfectly running, hopefully. And then we'll do add-ons. Uh, I don't want to do add-ons just until the system is up and running and it's holding good pressure and it's not uh, pressure locking itself up like it's getting a steady flow of fluid. Like I just want to see other things happen first before I take that path. Um, so yeah, what else? That's really uh, the update for now. Um, so I think I'm going to leave it there. I would really love to take this cab off the seat and like paint like the black little handles and do touch up paint there and there and just everywhere a little touch up stuff i want to see if there's a console you can see there's supposed to be a console in here you see where screws go and stuff there was supposed to be like a little console and stuff here with screens and stuff uh they have 114 scale fully decked out interiors that will fit right in there uh so it has like the screen it has the seat touched up and painted uh, it's on AliExpress. They're not that expensive. I thought about getting one of those just to really take this to the next level. Uh, the cool things is these those electric um, those electric attachments for this thing is insane. I watched the little hammer, electric hammer you can buy for this, break through concrete, break through bricks. Like it's really powerful. It is not the fastest. It's not meant to. It's like a real hammer it works at it. Uh, the claw can shear stuff. It's insane. Like. Uh, and obviously you can add hydraulic ones. I wouldn't do hydraulic ones just because the system is so sound and has so much power. I don't want to take anything away, but I would definitely do electric attachments like a, maybe an electric quick disconnect, an electric hammer, an electric claw, demolition claw, like stuff like that would be amazing. So, uh, and I love the buckets, how the teeth come off. They have, they have another bucket that has I like the, uh, like the pieces on the sides, like the cutting thing. I forget what it's called. 
like it, it's just amazing so yeah this this machine has blown me away i absolutely love it uh so yeah that's gonna i guess do it for this video sorry about the dig video there will be another one obviously so stay tuned for that uh just pen weather pending i don't want to it's been it was a swamp that's why i really couldn't even go in the yard and straight up day i want to show you guys that you can literally roll this out to your yard and start digging that's the main goal obviously it proved it over there um by the vines and the toughest dirt i think i could find uh i think the yard would be easier to dig in, in my personal opinion so uh and you can this machine can use the ripper attachment on it and pretty much dig an area scenario a lot of folks We'll use the ripper combo, ripper and bucket combo, and dig anywhere because some dirts are just so compacted over the years that have not been dug into. that are extremely hard. It will still slowly dig in it, but it just takes so much longer. You just attach your ripper with a quick disconnect and you got to use your hands. Rip it, dig it, rip it, dig it, and tear right through that stuff, or at least rip the tough stuff and then start digging from there. So you have quite a few options with this machine, which I love. So I wanted to share that with you guys. It is my well really it's a 480 and that's a 336 and the cab sizes are about the same with the doors and stuff and the people in them so really these will work together in my opinion they're just a different class of machine that's all you know what i mean uh it's just meant for something else it's a little bit bigger but depending where you do set them i'm not going to set them side by side obviously this one's going to be on a different area of the construction site doing smaller you know drains and then this is going to be doing the big stuff so uh the big demoing or whatever so i think i can still have them on the same construction site they both can load that truck uh the bobcat is is kind of small even for that one but then that's a fun little toy project now there are brooder ones and there are other bobcats by the way they have a 114 scale hydraulic bobcat i forget what the price is like 1200 1300 1400 something like that but this thing is incredible as a full hydraulic, ready to run. I think you have to provide your own battery. I think it comes with one of these transmitters, like the Fly Sky. You know, where is that? Like one of these or something like that, something similar. But like, that's fine. Like, those things are beasts. And they have a forklift that I thought was really cool. They have, those are bags of RCs, by the way. That's not garbage. That's just not having room in the room. Uh, but, anyways, um, yeah, it's, it's just insane. There's my bag of dirt. <laughs> and there's my puppy. But uh, that's a stone version of my puppy. He looks just like him. That's a really old school at that. Those are really cool. But anyways, I get sidetracked really easy. But what I'm saying is, um, yeah, so they have the trucks. Um, this, so this truck right here, by the way, has got some power. So what I was thinking is it has a hitch on the back. It's getting a, just a small little trailer that will carry this. This truck will pull 20 pounds all day long. The amount of bricks I put in the back is probably 20 pounds, honestly, if not more. So I don't think it's going to issue of pulling it, especially a lot of the weight's going to be actually on the trailer tires. And this is just going to need to pull it on wheels. For sure, I think it'll achieve that. I don't think it'll be too hard on it. Um, I'm going to be pulling for miles and miles. It's going to be going around the little construction site. I think that would look really cool for scale, right? So I think, and it being both being 16, so I think... This would be the truck to pull this one. I just got to find a small trailer. Uh, I think Diecast Masters maybe sells one or someone sell a similar 116 scale little trailer. Even if it's 114 scale and it fits on here and the tractor fits on there. Doesn't matter if it's on there and it works fine. I'm fine with it. This is a whole new animal. Being 60 pounds, uh, it's going to need... I'm not saying this couldn't pull 60 pound on wheels, but I think it's going to be really rough on it. I think that'll be a better combo to pull. Um... A buddy of mine that I work with has a 114 scale Tamiya truck. It, it's a King Hauler. I forget what he said it was. It's a really nice truck. It'll it'll pull this for sure. But looking at the trailers or the low boy for it, you're talking 900 plus. I think 899 was the cheapest one I've seen. Most of them are like a thousand or a thousand plus. Um, so yeah, uh, the trailer's expensive. Not to mention the truck's expensive in itself. So I don't think I'll be buying. If I do get any more trucks in the future, not right now, obviously, because I got to pump the brakes a little bit. Um, well, I'm still getting RCs and have tons of RCs and boxes, but pumping the brakes, I'm buying, you know, expensive things like this. Uh, a 114 scale Tamiya truck, like a Mack Grand Hauler or something like that, 114 scale that has a hitch on the back that I can put a trailer on that and pull it with that, I would like. Uh, that would be cool. 
If not, just have that dump truck and leave it as a dump truck and just have this on site. Uh, maybe he'll get a trailer. Maybe we'll, I'll get a trailer and then just have the trailer here. And then whenever we meet up on construction lines or whatever, he hooks up to his truck and he pulls me around. I think that would be cool. Or I may eventually, you never know. Um, I'm hoping to get partnerships with companies. Um, I'm really like to honestly, I'm going to give him an honest review. I'm not that negative. Like everything has, I feel like a lot of stuff has its place in the price bracket. Uh, really, some stuff can be junk, but literally the most of the stuff I've had on channel that I've had on channel is decent. I'm just gonna be honest, honest with you. It's decent. It's really what you like and what you're into. Like some folks like, you know, let's say something else and it's a weird brand and no one else likes it, but they like it and it's a lot of fun and it's, and it's valuable to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? This is more, this excavator is more valuable to me than this one just because it's sentimental value. I kind of wish it, the things I wouldn't have done to it and the messing with the hydraulics of it. But other than that, it, it, it didn't break on its own. I broke it. So this is a great machine. That's why I still think this is still the best budget entry level machine you can buy uh, into the hobby. Now, obviously, when you have some more money, I would lean on this bad boy right here because this thing is a beast. There is a significant price difference. Everyone can't get this. I know that. I'm not, you know. Uh, but the cool part is there is options in getting these. Um, when you buy these, by the way, uh, you can't use PayPal and you can't use a credit card. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I mentioned the price. So you guys know the price. You basically have to give them a bank transfer, like a bank account, bank transfer, or go with that company called Affirm. And you can make monthly payments on it. But they pay it in full immediately right away. And you make payments on it. You can do it that way because they won't take PayPal. And they won't take other things. Credit cards and stuff. So, uh, And a lot of people don't feel comfortable giving the bank account out. So just keep that in mind. That's an option. And that makes it more available. Uh, I think something like this. Uh, or I looked at that method just to see what it was about. Uh, I think to buy this for 12 months. And a 12 month. Like 12 payments is like 300 something bucks. That's more doable than giving someone 3,500 outright with shipping, uh, costs and everything, right? So keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, great machine. So I just wanted to share the sticker stuff with you. Talk, kind of talk about the other stuff in the channel as well. There's tons of stuff to come. The construction site will be up and running soon. Hopefully, see, they got this one pointed towards the back. <laughs> That's a lot easier to deal with. I don't know if it was placement and fitment. Uh, because it has to clear this lid and it has to be able to open and close, obviously. So maybe it has to do with fitment. I'm not sure. But yeah. Um, so really, that covers that stuff. Um, you know, I'll let you guys know as stuff comes in. Uh, once all the stuff for this comes in, I'll immediately let you know. We'll unbox all the stuff, see the quality of it and everything. And then we'll start uh, doing the part, the build series in different parts, showing you how I set it up diagrams it's all going to kind of be uh prototyping so it may change several times during a build and i'll let you know maybe if it's better this way maybe the flow like it, it's just it's a lot of factors to it and i really want it to be right and i want to be able to put this lid on that is the biggest thing for me even if i get rid of this plastic battery tray and i make a little holder in there or whatever like uh being able to put this lid on and then i should be able to use this hydraulic tank which is no which is perfectly fine. I may tap a breather hole. I think, I feel like they kind of need uh, breather holes in them. Um, just seeing this one, I think that makes a difference. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. So, but yeah, there you have it, guys. So I just wanted to share that. So there's just going to be a lot of steps taken to this design. Uh, it's going to take a lot of characteristics away from like uh, like the way this one's made. I'm going to try to not clone, but like get some ideas and inspirations from it because it just works so well. I know the motor is not going to be the same. This is going to be a faster turning motor. Uh, we may, we have options with the pump. So I got one option, which is AMPA. I think it's a little bit bigger. Uh, really, I'd rather go lower MPA and bigger motor if I could fit it in here just to keep a more torquier, more consistent fluid. Or maybe the other one will be perfectly fine. I don't know. But there's just going to be a lot to this. And I don't think this project is going to be ongoing. Even if I get this whole system fully hooked up and it works great and I like it, doesn't mean that I'm not going to be prototyping other stuff for it and trying to somehow enhance it or make it better in the future. So keep that in mind. Uh, if there's no room for weights inside, I thought about making, you know how excavators get like these weight things on the back? They're like little 
like legitimate weights. Those weights look just like I'll paint them the right color and everything. And I'll make like a little bracket. Like I really want to make this really nice. I love to increase this weight. If we can hit 30 pounds, because we're adding a lot of stuff. If we can hit 30 pounds with this machine, uh, I think he said the sweet spot for kilograms, I forget what it was, 20 something kilograms was the sweet spot to where it's not light enough to where it won't have as much problems pulling itself forward and not having enough weight behind its hydraulic power to dig, right? So it's not only the hydraulic power, not so much the MPA, but the constant flow of power, like a torquey motor, like constant strong flow without the flow like changing on you, and then the weight. So I think we could address both of those, honestly. Uh, we may have to change these to four mil, but then it, well, I guess it would go into the thing, so it wouldn't matter, but we'll see. Maybe three mil is enough. Honestly, I think between four mil and three mil is only like 0.5 inner diameter difference. Like it's not, I don't think it's that big of a deal, hopefully. Uh, you should be able to keep 290 PSI in that diameter of a pipe. Like this only runs like 290. So you should be able to achieve that hopefully in there and keep it. So yeah, and they all need to be cleaned up. They all have like fingerprints and stuff and stuff. They all need to be cleaned up and stuff for the for the obviously for shows. I would like to I'm I would like to bring you guys along if I go to like a club meeting to where it's like a show where they show all their equipment and stuff. I would love to show that for you guys and stuff like that. Uh, going to the airfield this year, I want to film a lot of the flights and stuff and the cool stuff that happens there. I, I like to bring you in the RC community is amazing, guys, and I really want you guys to be a part of that. So. I know this video went a little longer than I wanted to, but it addressed a few other things as well. Incredible, incredible machines here. Either one of them, you can't go wrong. Uh, this is just much more, much more budget friendly. Or you could save the money and go for this one and just skip it. It's completely up to you. It's depending on your budget. If you don't feel like this is something you can achieve, like I said, the firm makes it in further, closer reach to a lot of folks honestly and rc four wheel drive uh is a decent so far what i can tell is a decent company with a lot of stuff there will be tests in the near future that will let me explain later and we'll be tests to see how the company responds and how it treats things so we'll figure those out uh we'll you know we'll see how what kind of relationship we can build with them so that's gonna conclude for this one Man, those stickers look good. Hopefully you guys enjoyed them. I've seen guys putting like the bigger one here and mixing around and stuff. That's cool if you want to customize, but I feel it just, just looks right. Like, it just looks right. So, yeah, really, really happy, guys. Um, I know there was like a sticker that can go like on the lid from that. Like I said, the t colors were different. I'm not going with it. I'm really happy. So, uh, I do want to do some touch-up painting. Maybe she can like paint all these like handles this color black like the handles, right? And then do the inside of the cab and stuff. I'll do a video on that maybe later on. We'll see how things go and progress. Uh, but stay tuned for Dig and tons of other videos coming up soon, construction sites, events, everything. So stay tuned for that. We have tons of stuff in boxes that we need to get to. Tons of tests, tons of stuff to come. Still looking, working on the editor thing, still working on kind of design. Uh, I think in the near future, hopefully I can get some shirts made, some stickers. So stay tuned for all that. And I'll let you guys know about that as well. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.